Join Monitor's Lead Notification Squad today to get rid of all that retail Christmas music. What's up everybody? Getting this video done was a little bit different than the others, as the only place it's available is on Pivx, and it's only out in Japanese. So I did my best to translate it and get the story, but there are some things that got lost along the way. Regardless of the language barrier, I ask everybody to please head on over to Twitter using the link below and show your support for the author, Toshio Wataru. Also, big shout out to Miles Kirby for the $10 Patreon subscription. All the money from Patreon goes towards new episodes of Dragon Ball Infinity the Animated Series. So Miles, thank you so much for your generous generosity and expect to see your name in the credits. A few days after the Tournament of Power. Frieza finds himself floating in the void of space, venting his frustrations after the events that previously transpired. Disgusted, there are so many proven to be a superior in combat. Though, maybe in the long run, this could be a good thing. To restore the respect and fear to his name, perhaps more training must be done. While he's still undecided upon attacking the gods themselves, he isn't saying he won't do it either. Then, a mysterious figure reveals himself, ironically commenting on how nice the weather is today, before telling Frieza he shouldn't feel such shame, asking if he'd like to play king once more. Pressing, it's a good feeling to see the Space Lord sunk so low. Quipping to not give him praise for failure, Frieza then takes interest in this man's ability to survive in space, who tells him he's able to travel at will, with much more freedom and speed than Frieza himself. Raising his hand, Frieza comments that he will have to do something about this attitude of his. Perhaps it's just what he needs to help forget the tournament. Firing a death beam at the man, Frieza makes a crack about how all that freedom is working for him now. Then, hearing his voice from behind. Well, that was rather rude. As he is seen emerging from a portal of some kind, he goes to tell the former emperor who he is. On Beerus's world, everyone simultaneously senses the strange power, able to tell it's Frieza and somebody new. Goku and Vegeta are unable to make heads or tails of it. The only thing that is for certain, they're fighting. Vegeta believes they're pretty evenly matched, but Whis isn't so sure. That's when Goku feels a shift in power, claiming he's not exactly confident himself he can take on this new guy. Vegeta growling at the admission of someone stronger than Frieza. As Goku goes to check things out, Whis urgently reminds him that he can't breathe in space and for him to take him with him. Grabbing a shoulder, they quickly teleport to the fight. And just as they sensed, Frieza is well on the ropes against this new adversary. He glances over his shoulder at their presence, turning his back on Frieza before. Looking on, Goku bulks yet again at this new foe. Whis, it's been a while. As Goku already assumes the worst, it's confirmed that this man is indeed an angel who introduces himself as Murno, telling him it's already been a crazy day, asking Whis to say hi to the family for him before making another portal. Whis calls after him, brother, wait. But the wayward angel only apologizes, stating there are other matters afoot, and bids Whis farewell, taking off, leaving Goku and his mentor floating in space with more questions than when they arrived. Back on Beerus' planet, they inform Vegeta of the situation, Whis explaining that Myrna was his brother and best friend before he vanished one day, causing Goku to finally reminisce about his own sibling, looking over to Vegeta and asking, Hey, don't you have a brother too? And yours is still alive and well! You should really spend more time together! But we all know how Vegeta feels about showing any form of affection. Whis then gets very serious, going into detail on how his brother was the angel of the God of Destruction of the 13th universe, one of the six realms that Lord Zeno chose to erase. However, until now, he was sure he no longer existed, stunning Goku on how somebody could escape Zeno's power. Vegeta questions if Myrna was always this powerful, but Whis doesn't believe so. Defeating Frieza with such ease is one thing, but escaping Zeno is completely unheard of even for angels. Once Zeno decides to do something, it becomes unchangeable. The fact that he chose to erase Murno should have made it become the infallible law of reality, even though his brother was known for immense power and technique. Even he, cutting Whis off, they hear. So, this is where you've been living. Stepping into their plane of existence, Murno greets Whis once more, who is paralyzed at the sight of him. Looking toward Goku and Vegeta, he asks who these two mosquitoes are, then recognizes Goku from a few moments ago, complimenting him on getting back here so quickly. But singling out Vegeta, he only says, What a shame. 
bringing Vegeta to a bit of confusion. Going on, he explains that he senses Vegeta does not possess the same abilities as his counterpart. Vegeta, being who he is, asks what that matters, but the angel tells him to calm down, as that is why he himself is here. Goku finally interjects, asking what he wants, explaining, matter-of-factly, that he just wants to see who the strongest fighter in Universe 7 is. Goku responds, almost out of character, telling him that could end up being a rather deadly endeavor. But then the angel, in a bit of an ADD moment, hey, wait, wasn't there a purple cat here once? But regaining focus, he assures Goku that he bears no grudge towards them, even though, rumor has it, this place does house amazing foods. Despite the quirkiness of the stranger, Goku can't sit right, demanding to know what his goal is. Murno calmly tells him that it's a game, nothing more, leaving the planet momentarily silent. Before Murno reiterates, he thinks this is going to be fun. But that's when Whis jumps between him and the Saiyans, knowing how powerful any angel is compared to mortals. But this challenger tells Whis it's no use, demanding he get out of the way. But when he refuses, Murno can only utter, well, look at that. And here I was, happy to see you again, brother. At any rate, this is the beginning of enlightenment. Never one to back down, Goku lets the rogue angel know that he has no issue in fighting him. This confidence intrigues Murno, given he knows firsthand he has no chance at victory. Elaborating, Goku lets him know that he does not want to fight, but if he's come to cause harm, it leaves him little choice. To summarize the following conversation, essentially, Murno is baffled at the belief Goku and Vegeta are willing to fight, but have no genuine motivation. So he decides to conjure up a plan, using one of his portals. He grabs Pan from the Earth, demanding he let her go. He assures Goku this is only meant to be a demonstration of his abilities, a demonstration that he can end the life of anyone he loves at any moment if he thinks he's holding back. As Pan begins to cry, Murno's humorous side comes back, putting her back through the portal, muttering, I don't know what I'm doing with this thing anyway, before looking back at the Saiyans. So, come on then. Goku, now furious anyone would dare lay hands on somebody he loves, warns the stranger he should be careful what he wishes for, before being told his idle threats are meaningless, unless he intends to back them up. And at this rate, it seems they will be here for a while. Elated to see Goku has harnessed God Key of all things, the Saiyan is done waiting himself. As he sends the angel flying, Whis warns Goku not to engage him further, but it's far too late for that. Complimenting Goku on such a hit, Murno expresses his excitement in finding such a formidable opponent. Vegeta looking on knowing how bad the situation is. With a sinister grin, the angel shouts that he can't wait to see what the future holds. During a break in the action, it becomes clear rather quickly that Goku isn't holding up well. Even Vegeta admits he's not sure how they're going to get out of this one. Calling him out, Murno tells the Saiyan Prince that he's correct in his passive approach to this fight. And sometimes, it is better to just admit defeat. But Vegeta assures him they will find a way to win, and it's only a matter of time. Scoffing at the notion, he tells the Saiyan that all this talk means nothing. In fact, he's already met someone quite like him. Asking what the celestial being means, he goes on to detail on how a powerful demon was the destroyer of his universe, and a great galactic ruler, very similar to Frieza's status in this universe, was a Saiyan that was a spitting image of Vegeta himself. Naturally, the Saiyan was no match for a destroyer, and was easily dispatched. Although, things here have transpired profoundly different than in his own universe, so it's possible they're not at all related. Ever prideful, Vegeta asks the Saiyan's name, but this topic has begun to bore Murno, reaching back through a portal retrieving Pan yet again. He reminds Goku exactly what he's fighting for. Falling for his trap. The angel tricks Goku, sending him through the portal. But where has he sent him off to? And why? Pan falls right into the waiting arms of Vegeta, as the villain shouts out that it looks like only one remains now telling the prince he sent Goku somewhere cold and empty, a lonely void, furthering this by explaining to Vegeta that Goku lacked the cold-heartedness needed to be his true opponent, admitting to the Saiyan prince that he and himself seemed to share an unspoken bond. Both the ranks were taken from them by someone who was unjustly powerful. But this speech is interrupted as the villain turns around to find the father of angels and the right hand to Zeno himself, 
the Grand Minister, smugly asking what he wants. He peacefully reminds Murno that his very existence is unacceptable. The fact he's meddling in the affairs of mortals is a whole other story. But the fallen angel tells his father he answers to no one, as he, Zeno, as well as his angel siblings all turn their back on him, doing nothing as Zeno erased everything he'd ever known, and he doesn't plan on letting them get away with it. Even Vegeta lets him know what a bad idea that is, but naturally, Murno doesn't care what any of them have to say, deciding it's best to leave, telling his brother and father it was a nice reunion before disappearing. Whis apologizes to the Grand Minister for doing nothing to stop him, but his father understands. Vegeta explains the events that just took place, as the minister confirms that Murno is indeed his son, and everything he had to say is more or less true. Upon asking where he thinks Kakarot was sent, the Grand Minister believes he has an idea. 